I mean, it definitely was a really challenging task. Uh, I had to convince not just my parents, but also my 92-year-old uh, grandmother at that time uh, that I would like to open up her home her, and my ancestral home uh, to becoming a heritage hotel in the east of India. Uh, it was obviously a super challenging. I mean, convincing her was really hard because uh, she's lived from a different era and telling her that now her home overnight was going to be transformed into a hotel to welcome guests was um, was a bit difficult for her to digest. Uh, for my father, I think it took about a year and a half. Uh, I think I'd sown the seeds uh, initially and then I was just watering it every other day so that I could actually see it bloom. And yeah. finally, after a year and a half, he agreed to buy into my idea. Um, and he did put the initial investment uh, in order to restore and renovate the entire property, uh, which was basically converted into an 11 bedroom uh, and 11 leisure room uh, heritage hotel. The renovations, of course, the um, the entire pa palace from the inside looks like a little bit like a Wes Anderson movie. So I would say that the colors are super bold and block, and uh, they're very young and dynamic. Uh, it's something that we, that. I wanted to do per se. Uh, generally the color palette which was used in the palace was very European, pastel shades and we kind of went a little bit bolder into that because I just wanted to add a little bit of the young uh, touch into the property in itself. I'm a teacher as well as a practitioner. Uh, apart from hosting my own online classes, uh, I also host retreats uh, in India as well as outside India, especially Bali. Uh, this year I am actually inviting two yoga groups coming into Bulgaria, so I'm not going to be acting as a practitioner, uh, uh, as a teacher, uh, I'm actually going to be acting as a venue locator. So, Bulgaria will be hosting two such retreats at the end of this year. Hello, my name is Akshita Bhanjdeo, and this is my sister Mernalika, and we're here from the Bulgaria Palace in the beautiful city of Nizam's Hyderabad at Fiki Flow Hyderabad. So, to answer your question on speaking about um, you know the challenges of opening up as a property, the one point I wanted to add was um, royalties. Royal families have always found it their duty to give back to society and to um, work for their community. And I think the one thing that convinced our family um, was to use tourism as a vehicle for sustainable development. Mm -hmm. So percentage of funds from people coming and staying in the royal residence actually go back to community initiatives we support, okay. um, including in health, education, sports and conservation. Okay. So I think that was a... Uh, a very uh, a very interesting point that they couldn't overlook. The second point I want to add in terms of new interesting things we added to the palace, we definitely wanted to bring in a wellness aspect as well. Okay. So to to uh, to sort of restore was one part, and to upgrade to even introducing a spa, wellness centers. Um, that was a really interesting, exciting opportunity to look at the new age traveler and have the boutique property fit that as well. Kakatiya Dynasty being in Telangana is such an important, uh, and the Nizams of Hyderabad are really important players in terms of of bringing this uh, Telangana and Hyderabad onto the global stage. Um, and they've been very close relations with the Kakate dynasty and uh, dynasties of Kalinga, including the Bastar state. Okay. Um, so Kamal Chandra Bhanjadeo from Bastar, I think, had visited Telangana recently. Okay. But it's really interesting because uh, a lot of these older dynasties have had um, alliances and traditions. So it's really been great to come back to Hyderabad and be able to be in a state where a lot of our ancestors have visited um, and vice versa. Okay, so <laughs> I keep on coming up with questions that like, I hope I'm not, you know. Um, how did your ancestors or your travel... Um, so you know the story, like I said, of Jay and Tata as well. The fact that yeah. one of my ancestors recognized the need for India to have its own, um, uh, without the help of the British, its own iron ore and steel mine. So that led to the first, uh, in a way, public-private partnership of, uh, you know, Jay and Tata coming and building the Ghoramasani iron ore mine, which led to the Tata conglomerate that started from Mayurbhanch. Uh, even sabai grass, the grass that was, was brought from West Africa because it relies it relied less on water than other crops, can act as a cash crop. So they always they were always looking for ways to make um, Mayurbhanch an entrepreneurial, a new age, um, you know, power economy to contend with. So I think we just took lessons from our ancestors in the history books. Um, so, you know, pay attention right. in class. <laughs> I just feel like, I mean, at the end of the day, you know, their bloodline is in our bloodline. So yeah. at the end of the day, their thoughts, their processes, their entrepreneurial spirit also is within us. Yeah. Uh, so I think it was only natural for it to come out in the way that it did in our 20s, in our late 20s, whenever it did. Yeah. Um, and uh, over the over actually exploring Bulgaria and creating that into a heritage hotel, we also realized the amount of work that our ancestors had already done. Mm -hmm. And we were just reaping the benefits of it. So I yeah. think it will also became our duty to be able to take that forward to um, you know be the custodian of that legacy and take it forward something that they had already started